In this video, we'll give a brief introduction to academic writing. Let's start by discussing why you should care. Firstly, all of you will have to write numerous pieces of coursework during your degree, not to mention your final project reports, which are expected to be written in a formal academic style. Not only that, you'll have to read quite a lot of academic literature, which, if you're not used to it, can seem like a strange and alien genre. After you graduate, some of you may work in academia, but even if not, some of the rules and conventions of academic writing can improve the clarity of your writing in other areas. For example, being careful about how you state an opinion, limiting your conclusions to only those which can be supported by your analysis, and learning how to engage with the body of literature. There are numerous definitions of academic writing or academic style, but they broadly agree on the following characteristics. I hope it goes without saying that academic writing is non-fiction. The write-up is not the place for you to stretch your imagination. You do that in your scientific work itself. The write-up is a recounting of things you've done or concluded. Other common characteristics of academic writing are its formal style, so there's no colloquial language or slang, its conciseness, academic writing tries to convey ideas succinctly. Often, this is one of the biggest barriers to reading it, especially in a new field, as well understood ideas or complex arguments can be densely packed in a short paragraph or a few sentences. Academic writing is always structured, usually separated into sections like introduction, methodology, results, and so on. Academic writing is evidenced. The statements made in a piece of academic writing should all be backed up by some kind of evidence, either from other sources or from results or new evidence and arguments presented in the text. Related to this is the idea of intertextuality. This just means when different texts refer to each other. This is less common in other forms of writing, but ubiquitous in academic writing, probably one of its defining characteristics. It might help to understand the idea of a discourse community, or the distinct but related idea of a community of inquiry. You are familiar with discourse communities, though you probably don't call it that. Reddit, for example, hosts thousands of discourse communities. There are some features of a discourse community, usually six are given, but to summarise, basically, it's a community of people engaged in discussion, argument and creation around some particular end. The members are assumed to have a degree of knowledge about the relevant topics, and within the community there are certain common conventions and styles. Not every discourse community communicates with formal academic pros, but of course academics do. So, when writing academic work, you can imagine you're walking into a room where people have already been talking for hours. They're too busy to stop and explain things to you, but luckily someone has been taking notes. Before you can participate, you probably want to read the notes and listen to the discussion for a while, so that when you join in, you can make a useful contribution. This idea of a discourse community is why academic writing will almost always try to do the following four things. First, Explain first why you have something novel and relevant to say. Remember the discussion has been going on for a while, so a lot has been said already. Next, academic writing makes some sort of claim or has some thesis. This thesis is then situated within the literature and evidence is given and an argument for the claim is made in a way that all members of the community have agreed to accept. Finally, that brings us to some practical advice about academic style. The first and easiest convention is structuring your work. Here's an example of a template for a research paper to be submitted to the journal PNAS. It's quite prescriptive. It tells you everything you need to do, what sections to include, how to identify yourself and your affiliations, the maximum number of words in the title, and so on. Very rarely in academic writing will you just be starting with a blank page. There are many types of academic writing, literature reviews, book reviews, letters, conference proceedings, editorials, and so on. However, by far the most common type is a research paper or report. This should have a logical linear structure which almost always follows this pattern. Within the introduction, you'll give some necessary background and explain the direction you're going in the text. The body is the main argument. In science, this is usually some description of your methods, as well as the presentation and discussion of the results you obtained. It may be split into multiple sections. Finally, your conclusions are where you summarise your argument, discuss its implications, and perhaps suggest future work. Within each of these sections, keep in mind the two principles of logic and purpose. Research papers and academic writing generally should be focused so that when you add a sentence or paragraph, there should be a reason for it. Interesting asides and irrelevant materials should be removed. The material you do include should build up line by line, paragraph by paragraph, to convince the reader of the validity of your conclusions. There are some particular features of academic writing you should be aware of. Mostly you'll learn these by osmosis from reading the literature, but I'll highlight a couple of important ones. The first are signaling words. These are very common in academic texts, and their purpose is to help structure your argument as well as guide the reader. The simplest case is using words like firstly, secondly, and finally to lay out an argument or indicate to the reader the chain of logic you will follow. Another example are signal words like thus, therefore, and consequently. These indicate to the reader that the point that comes after is supposed to directly follow or be an effect of what was said before. There are lots of examples, and again, you'll pick these up through your own reading of academic literature. 
a very common trope or point of style in academic writing, which is strongly discouraged in other formats, so sales for example, is hedging. This is the practice of strongly indicating uncertainty or caution. For example, you'd very rarely see such a strong statement as, we have proven that online learning is more effective than in-person teaching. Can we be sure this is true for all students across all subjects at all times? Academic writing would add a hedge here, so instead of proven, we would make the weaker case that our research suggests the result. We would add, also add more specificity, so we make sure to define the context in which we're working. This example is made up, by the way, if you want to know about the research on online learning, you'll have to look it up yourself. Lastly, let's discuss intertextuality. As mentioned, academic writing is a way of participating in a discourse community, and as such, always builds on and relates to the work of others. One common way to do this is to very briefly summarise or paraphrase the work of others. Here's an example of summary, where we reference the original work and try to accurately state what it said. A paraphrase is very similar, using your own words to state someone else's idea. Keep in mind when summarising and paraphrasing, use your own words and structure. Make it clear what was said by the authors of the target work and what is your own, and also make it clear why you're including it. Quoting is directly including parts of other texts in your own work and should be done very sparingly. Another common way to use other texts is to synthesize the results and ideas from multiple works into your argument. This technique is hard because it requires a good understanding of other people's work, but powerful as it demonstrates a deep and critical engagement with the literature. Actually finding literature is fairly straightforward. Numerous academic search engines exist and the university will give you access to a huge number of journals if you can't find an open access version. Related works can then be found either within the bibliographies of the papers that you read or from looking at articles which cite them.